What is up? This is the seventh episode of the Lax Factor Lacrosse podcast, and today we are going to talk about the history of the number 22 at Syracuse University. We're going to discuss the fact that it's not going to be worn again this year for the second straight year by a Syracuse men's lacrosse player. We're going to discuss the history dating all the way back to Gary Gate, the guy that made the number famous for for the orange, and we'll go all the way through every player that's worn it all the way up to the most recent player that's worn it, and we're going to get started. The number 22 has always been an important number in the sport of lacrosse. It was doled out to a team captain or to a team's best player long before Gary Gate burst onto the scene and started a love affair between Syracuse University and the old number 22. It all started with a Canadian kid named Gary Gate. As a freshman at Syracuse, he actually didn't wear number 22. The the number was already doled out, and he wore number 38, oddly enough, as a freshman. I, I was trying to find footage that showed him wearing number 28, and I couldn't get any. But he, as a sophomore, Roy Simmons Jr., had asked who wanted the number 22, and there was no significance, I don't believe, at the time. Gary just wore number 22 in high school, and so he wanted to wear number 22 at Syracuse. So as soon as it was offered up, Gary put his hand up and said, I want it, and that is how Gary Gate got the number 22 and how that number started to become legend in Syracuse. In the three seasons that Gary Gate wore number 22, He was a first-team All-American all all three seasons, and he was the only player to wear that jersey that ever won three national championships because we all know that the 1990 championship actually counted. The point in my life when I was like, holy shit, this Gary Gate guy is crazy, was in the quarterfinals against Penn when he busted out the first air gate. He invented a new goal. Who does that? Who invents a new goal? Over his career, Gate scored 192 goals, had 61 helpers, and a total of 253 points, which was ridiculous for a midfielder. And we fast forward to 1991. Gary Gate has graduated. Nobody at this point is assigned the number 22. They've got Charlie Laser Lockwood on campus. He was one of the top recruits coming out of high school. He had always donned the number seven through his high school playing career. So he was about to grab number seven. That was what he was going to wear his freshman year at Syracuse. And as Lockwood puts it, Roy Simmons Jr. pretty much pestered him and 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 punked him into wearing 22, pretty much daring him to do it, asking him if he was man enough to put that jersey on and to pick up that mantle after Gary after Gary did it. Uh, Lockwood admitted that no one really wanted to pick it up. You know, no one wanted to to carry that load. And Simmons pressured him into it. Lockwood did it. And the rest was history. Lockwood went on to be a four-time All-American. He went on to put up 87 goals, 55 assists, and 152 points. Not too bad for a four-time All-American. And he helped Syracuse capture a national title in 1993 as a junior. And all good things must come to an end. So Charlie Lockwood graduates, 1995 rolls around, and there was no question. Casey Powell out of Carthage, a a local kid, he he's coming to Syracuse. So there, it was all it was it was always known he's going to put on 22. He's going to be the man, and and he ended up being one of the greats all time in college lacrosse. Obviously, one of the greats all time at Syracuse, and I put him at my number three. Uh, number 22 wear all time, Casey, but Casey had a ridiculously incredible career. He was one of the only players to win a national player of the year at two positions. He won it at midfield one year and and an attack another year. He too was a four-time All-American. He ended up putting up 67 points as a freshman, 59 points as a sophomore, 83 points as a junior, and 78 points as a senior. And in his play, he, he the only knock on Casey compared to, say, Gary, was that he only got one national championship. He won that national championship with Syracuse in 1995 as a freshman, didn't win it again, but he did get to play lacrosse with his younger brother, Ryan, and their playing careers overlapped. Ryan wore number one while Casey was at, uh, still at Syracuse, and Casey obviously wore out the number 22, and he tore it up. But Casey, one of the greats ever, my number three uh, number 22. And, uh, I'm not going to tell you who number one or two are yet because that'll, that'll be my big reveal here as I get through all these. And just like that, it's 1999 Casey Powell 
graduates. There is now no question. Ryan Powell had already played with his brother Casey for two years. Ryan had tore it up right from the beginning, and he too was a four-time All-American at this point. He's now a junior in 1999, but he's already a two-time All-American, so no question. Ryan Powell is inheriting the number 22 from his brother Casey, so Ryan Powell uh, was the, the first Syracuse player to wear number 22 for less than three years. Ryan only got to enjoy it for two years, but he made the most of it, believe me. He put those two seasons wearing the deuce deuce to very good use. I did not mean to rhyme that, but it did. He ended up winning a national championship his senior year. So just like his brother Casey, he gets one title. That's excellent. He ends up putting up 287 points on his career, which tied Casey atop the all-time Syracuse points leaderboard, which is just fitting considering he got to play two years with his brother, and then he got to inherit his brother's jersey and the the famous number 22 from him and it it just it, it was a storybook ending for his career but we're not done yet because there's still another Powell to come Mikey Powell donned the jersey from 2001 he inherits it from his brother Ryan who inherited it from his brother Casey who inherited it from Charlie Lockwood who inherited it from Gary Gate Mikey Powell was the obvious choice. He was the top player coming out of high school that year out of Carthage. I had the pleasure of uh, being an assistant coach at Shenango Forks High School at the time, and we played Carthage in the state quarterfinals, and they completely ripped us. And Powell put up, I want to say he put up it, eight, ten points. It was something ridiculous, and I always thought it was double digits, but he put up a lot on us. So Mike Powell, the obvious choice when he came in as a freshman to Syracuse to wear the number 22, and holy hell, wear it did he ever. In my opinion, Powell is the greatest lacrosse player of all time. He's certainly the best lacrosse player at Syracuse, and the only player that could even compete with him, I think, it, 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 for all-time status is Lyle Thompson. But Powell, in his time wearing number 22, not only was he a four-time All-American, he was a four-time first-team All-American. He was a four-time Jack Turnbull winner, which is the Attackman of the Year award. He was a four-time finalist for the Tewarton, which is the equivalent of college football's Heisman Trophy in the sport of lacrosse. He won the Tewarton twice. And I believe to this day, he's one of only two players to actually win it twice. Maybe at that time, it was he was one of only two players to win the Tewarton Award. He was a two-time national champion. The guy dominated the sport of lacrosse. While he was at Syracuse, he had got them back to winning two national tit titles over a four-year span, which they had done that, but it hadn't crossed over in terms of the number 22 since Gate had won multiple titles with it back in the day. So Powell was the first number 22 since Gate to win multiple national titles. There's just players today. You can't understand everyone. You, you remember Paul, guys like Paul Rabel's careers. You remember Rob Pinnell's careers. You remember Lyle Thompson's careers. Lyle Thompson, while he dominated, he wasn't a four-time first team All-American. He didn't win Attackman of the Year four years in a row. He There were so many good players at that point that even Lyle wasn't necessarily the best attackman every season that he played. That's the difference between all of these other guys and Mike Powell. Mike Powell, when he played, he truly was the best player on the field every time he stepped on the field, no matter who they were playing. And that was true when he was a freshman, and that was still true when he was a senior. Mike Powell is my number one all-time number 22. It's kind of anticlimactic that I get to that, uh, that point in the middle of this. Uh, Gary Gate is my number two by proxy of being the first the guy to first do it and the guy that brought the number to fame initially and Casey Powell's my number three. I'm going to end it there. I'm not going to rank the other guys. They're all awesome. And we'll move on to the next. So 2005 rolls around and now here we are. We have no more Mike Powell. And in 2005, for the first time since Gary Gate Ward as a sophomore, we don't have anybody wearing number 22 for Syracuse. The following year, we have another huge recruit coming in, Dan Hardy. When I coached as an assistant at Whitney Point, I got to coach against Hardy's team, and we beat them at home at Whitney Point. Hardy played for Tully or Homer. I can't remember. It was either Tully or Homer. We'll, we'll, we'll have somebody fact check, check me in the comments. And he ends up being the first number 22 to not be a four-time All-American, but he was a three-time honorable mention All-American. He had an excellent career at Syracuse. He ends up winning two consecutive national championships his junior and senior year, and he has the game-winning assist to Cody Jamison, the guy who gets number 22 after he got done wearing it, in that crazy national championship game against Cornell. 
He puts up 136 points on his career, 83 goals, 53 helpers. So he ends up having a hell of a career. He wasn't Mike Powell, but who was ever going to be? But he handled the pressure of wearing number 22 after one of the greatest lacrosse players in the history of the sport wore it, and he, he, he did a noble job. And then we're at 2010. Hardy's graduated. They just got off winning two national championships in, in a row, back-to-back national championships for the first time since they did they won the three uh, consecutive back in the day with Gary Gate and, and company. And Cody Jamison decides, hey, he, he scored the game-winning goal the, the previous season in overtime. He's going to rock the number 22. He did an admirable job. He only played two seasons for Syracuse. He played two years at Onondaga Community College. I was the coach at Broome Community College at the time he was playing at Onondaga, and he trashed on us. Uh, both of those seasons that we had to play against him. He ends up putting up 36 goals, 16 assists for a total of 53 career points over that two-year span while playing for the Orange. But more importantly, he won us that national championship against against Cornell. He didn't, but he scored that game-winning goal. And and that game will that that was one of the craziest lacrosse games I've ever watched in my life. And just being a Syracuse fan, it was it was an honor, obviously, to get to uh, uh, be a part of that as a fan. And now we're at 2011, and Jojo Morasco is now the new high, you know, the new big recruit that we end up with. That's going to wear the number 22. As a freshman, he kind of piddled into the season. He ends up putting up three points as a freshman. His sophomore season was his big season. He goes 23 and 18 for 41 points. He had missed time as a freshman. He missed the last five games of the year, so that that held him back a little bit. And he's not the only number 22 that that kind of battled injuries early on in his career, which to a degree derailed them. But he goes on to have a a solid career. Career. And he finishes his career with no national championships. The first number 22 did not win a national title, but he did play in a national title game as a senior against Duke. Syracuse really should have won that. They were the favorite to win that game, and it was terrible play at the face-off X that cost, that cost Syracuse that national championship. They were so good on offense that year. They were so efficient on offense that year with all the studs that they had on the offensive side of the ball. And it ended up just being they got murked on face-offs by Duke that year. So JoJo, he doesn't get his national championship, but he finishes his career with 141 points, 54 goals, 87 assists. And at the time, by in his senior year, he broke Paul Gates' record for all-time assist lead, lead by a midfielder. Eh, I might have that wrong, but either way, he 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 surpassed Paul Gate on the all-time assist list with 87 assists. So he had a hell of a career, and especially by his senior year, that that was just a a, a group of kids that just clicked. And he wearing the number 22 was one of them. And it's uh, 2014. I'm getting thirsty in 2014. So 2014 comes. JoJo's gone. We have a a ridiculously highly regarded. Recruit Jordan Evans out of JD. I had saw him play a couple of times uh, when he was in high school in state quarterfinals two years in a row, and and I was I he's he was incredible. So all of us Syracuse fans were com- uh, completely pumped that we had Jordan Evans uh, on board, and he ends up being the first number twenty two to not be an All American at all. Um, JoJo was an All American his sophomore season at Syracuse. He's, he was an honorable mention All American, and. Evans, he ended up having injuries early in his career, his freshman year and sophomore year, that kind of hindered his development a little bit. He never got in the full flow of things until he was a junior. But he ends up putting up 14 points over his freshman and sophomore seasons, but he finishes his career off strong, 34 points as a, 35 points as a junior, and then 44 points off 19 goals and 25 assists as an attackman his senior year. So he had kind of shifted between playing mostly midfield his first three seasons, and then his senior year was on attack all season. So they ended up putting it together. They had a good team. They made the tournament. They lost early in the tournament. I believe his senior year, they lost a thousand, 10 7. Don't quote me on that, but you can call me names in the comments if you'd like to. So, Evans, he ends up having a good career. There's a few guys on the roster right now that I wouldn't be upset if they had gone into the locker room and said, Hey, I want, I want number 22. I think Steven Rafis could pull it off and and he's been there he was their best player last year he's going to be their best player again this year he's a great dodger he i i think so, what Syracuse and what I've heard Desco say is that they don't like the pressure that number 22 puts on the kids and I say to to hell with that concept I just don't see how it it, it would cause that much stress that a, that a kid couldn't handle you know, what, what that brings by putting that Jersey on. So Rafis, I'd be cool with it. I'd, I'd be cool if this season Tucker Dordovic had walked into the locker room and said, Hey, I'm going to wear number 22. It, you know, it, it's one of those things where I agree with some people it's wore off to the point that 
it doesn't have to be our best player necessarily that puts it on, but it does have to be a guy that's willing to go out and break his face on the field for his teammates and that's going to play big. You know, Jordan Evans, I, I was not the least bit upset the way that Jordan Evans represented that number his last two seasons, especially not his senior year. Same thing with JoJo. Uh, they didn't have the stellar four-year careers, but neither did Hardy. But all of these guys were ridiculously good lacrosse players. They were all world-class talent. They 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 brought something to the to the game and to Syracuse University, and they represented that number well. I want to see somebody put it on. I know a lot of people are saying it's time to give up, give it up. To hell with you, people. I, I would suspect that most of us Syracuse fans want to see someone strap that number, you know, put that number on. I don't care at this point, as long as it's somebody who who has a brass set of balls, who thinks that they can earn it. Just being that cocky to 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 decide that hey, I'm going to be the guy to wear that number. That's everybody who wore it leading up leading up to Mike Powell. They had that mentality that I'm the best. I am. They were all in their own way, ridiculously confident. I feel like Hardy was the first guy to wear it that didn't have that supreme confidence, but I think that was just more his demeanor. He was a quiet kid. The, the kid was still a savage, and you know he's, he's someone that you'd want to scrap with if you had to scrap. So either way, I, I'm of the mind, give, give someone that number. And I, I kind of agree with the mentality that don't give it to a freshman anymore. Maybe it doesn't go to a freshman, but there should always be a sophomore or a junior on that team that wants to wear that number. And I've been surprised that nobody's taken it yet. So Cook, he's wearing number two this year. Is that a hint at the fact that if he pans out, maybe he's going to be the guy to step up and put that jersey on? I wish somebody would. It has been fun chatting with you about the history of the number 22. I hope this was educational for you. I know it was for me because I had to put all this crap together and figure out all this information about all these players. And I put together video highlights and all sorts of crap. But I'm going to tell you this. If you enjoy our videos, please be sure to like. I don't know which side it's on. Subscribe. Share the video with your friends and your homeboys, please. Spread the word about how awesome I am. <laughs>